over time they get more active and move across the sky in a southerly direction. As activity increases, this indicates that an auroral substorm is about to occur. This is what aurora watchers love to see. Substorms can last from minutes to hours and are a wonder to behold. The bulk of the photography for this show was done around Tromsø in northern Norway. It's the easiest city to reach north of the Arctic Circle and moves under the auroral oval quite often. With a population of 50,000, it has good winter infrastructure, which makes travel and photography much easier. It's also home to the world's most northerly planetarium, where some of the first time-lapse movies of the aurora were made and presented. Predicting an aurora is difficult. Solar disturbances are not predictable, and the effects take time, one to three days to reach Earth, and might only last for 24 hours. I used coronal holes to plan photographic trips. These dark areas are places where the solar wind travels directly into space. As the sun rotates, jets spiral outward like water from a sprinkler. Through the open magnetic field at a coronal hole, the solar wind can shoot at up to 900 kilometers per second, twice its normal speed. Coronal holes can last for months, so as the sun turns, they can blast the Earth again and again every 27 days. January, and the Earth is traveling inside a solar windstream from a coronal hole. It lasted for several days. As the solar wind fires up the generator in our magnetosphere, the magnetic field lines stretch out, then suddenly snap back like rubber bands, flinging particles toward the poles. The result, many days of auroral activity and numerous substorms. In the next scene, look for the purple fringes at the bottom of the brightest aurora. This was auroral light from nitrogen. Its red and blue light is always there, but our eyes are not very sensitive to it. However, when a very energetic particle stream gets really low, in this case, about 80 kilometers high, the intense aurora gets a purple edge at the bottom, a mixture of the red and blue emissions. Toward the end of a display, large areas of the sky can flicker off and on, sometimes many times a second. Twenty-seven days later, another coronal hole and another immersion.
I'd seen a distant aurora before from the United States, but when the sky exploded with color and light, I was awestruck. The speed that the aurora forms shot across the sky was unbelievable. A number of solar explosions occurred during the shoot in addition to a stream from a corona hall. So each evening was filled with expectations of things to come. Here we are setting up the equipment and already just after sunset, there's a faint aurora in the sky. It was dang cold out, about minus 20 Celsius. This is what the cameras recorded. The bright object is the moon. Look for the halo of ice crystals around it. During March, the sun was very active. But so was the weather with heavy snow, cold temperatures, and strong winds. Auroras barely peek through breaks in snow showers. Snow drifts and ice made driving difficult, but there was always one eye on the sky. Tantalizing breaks revealed lots of activity. But the snow clouds won out in the end.